Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Dr. Ebene Williams. I'm the Director of Virtual Experience and Peer Engagement Initiatives here at UC San Diego. I work in the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs office, looking at ways of leveraging our student experience in the remote and virtual environment and within connections to one another. I am so excited to be able to lead this initiative called Mentoring for All. Our goal with Mentoring for All is to ensure that every student at UC San Diego has a mentor. It's really exciting. It's a part of our collective impact where we're looking to have all of us pulling in the same direction to erase opportunity gaps at UC San Diego. So today I'm gonna to talk about the value of mentoring and where you can find some mentoring resources right here at UC San Diego. But what I'm gonna talk about, you can apply to all aspects of your life. And I'd like to say that you're probably in a mentoring relationship right now. And let's talk about who those people are, what they've done, why you're in them, and how you can probably leverage and enhance that experience for yourself now and throughout your college experience to ensure that you get all you want out of that experience. So let's talk about the benefits of mentoring. In mentoring, you get to set goals. Why do we wanna set goals? I'm a scientist. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest will stay at rest. Goals put us in motion. Do we always achieve our goals? Not always, but you may have heard the term, if you shoot for the moon, you'll end up along the stars. So by moving somewhere, you'll get somewhere. You get guidance on a path forward. What are you majoring in? What's this new field? What's this new career? You get to see modeled behaviors of successful people or individuals who are thriving in the environment you may wanna be in. General sense of well being. that's about the connection piece of it. Validation of your experience and affirmation. Sometimes we have things happen to us and just knowing someone else has had that same thing happen lets you know that you're not alone in the world, lets you know that you have other people who have thrived, survived, and um, excelled despite one moment that may not be an ideal. Or, you know, you had a triumph and that triumph will lead to f further success. There's so many ways to connect in that validation space. It's also part of building a success team. What's in success team? It's individuals who want to see you succeed. Individuals who model the success that you'd like to emulate in your life and see thrive in your life. And mentoring is a fundamental piece of that. And you can grow in all aspects. And then we talk about having academic, athletics, careers, relationships. Mentoring isn't limited to just career success. Mentoring isn't limited to just learning one piece of life. Some people get mentored in their own relationships that they're trying to deal with or even parenting situations. There's so many things that we get mentored around in the world. So I want to tell you and affirm why I believe you're already in a mentoring relationship. You might be getting advice from somewhere. You might be getting motivation from television. You might have been in a training. You might have been coached in a team. Um, someone may tell you you have to do these steps to graduate or to get into college. All of these are forms of mentoring and you have done them throughout your life. Your schooling has taught that to you. If you've had a job, they've set goals that you've had to, to achieve. So this is the richness of the mentoring environment that exists already and can directly apply to your success at the university. I'm a first gen student and so none of my parents had gone to college. So there were languages and words that were used at colleges I'd never heard of and didn't even know I needed. And so this is where having the opportunity to talk to others who may have also been first gen or who just have been successful or who have been to college gave me an inside scoop on information around like, what are office hours, right? So talking about the stages of mentoring, you've decided based on what you want a mentor. You have a mentor, but maybe you need a new one because your success team needs to be bigger because you have big goals. This picture already shows all these steps, right? You set up the mentoring relationship, you search for one, you have a call, you introduce, you set some goals. But there's these stages of mentoring are really simple. There are four stages. One is you initiate and engage. What does that mean? You look for a mentor, you ask, you're clear about what you want to achieve, how often you may want to meet, what goals you want to set. I don't want you to feel like you have to have it perfect, but you know you have a question. A goal could be just simply, how do I get a job? How do I get an A in this class? How do I connect with a faculty member? How do I get ready for graduate school? You can have a question, that is a goal. And there's someone on the other side, your mentor, who should be able to answer it or give you some guidance on where to find the answer for yourself. 
Challenge and testing. This part of the relationship is really to know that you can trust each other. Do you show up to the call when you said you're going to show up to the call? Or is your mentor answering the question? Are you coming prepared with a question? These are both sides of the relationship that let you know that you're both invested in the relationship. And that's the second phase. So we've met, but now can we trust each other? And are we willing to work on a goal together? Develop trust and growth. So you already started to develop trust in the first phase. The growth piece is we're going to take on more steps. Your mentor may ask you to do certain things. Will you do those things? You may take on a new skill set or practice based on what your mentor has shared. You may take a different class. You may sign up for a new student org or join a group that you hadn't. You may volunteer. That's the growth piece, right? That's the learning piece that comes from mentoring. And then prepare for closure. So you've met your goal, you've met your timeline. So now you can say, well, I thank you. This is what I think I've gotten out of this. I really appreciate you. And this is how you've added to my life. The mentor may reiterate what they think they've seen you do. Um, and then you also have the opportunity that to say, well, you know, we have more time together. Here's a different question I'd like to tackle with you now that we have a rapport and a relationship. So relationships can be short-term spot mentoring, where you just have a quick question and someone answers it really quickly. It can be short-term, maybe it's a, a month, maybe it's three months. Um, UCSD works on the quarter. I would say short-term would be a quarter of mentoring. Is it long-term? Is it throughout your four years or five years or two years, depending on what type of student you are at UC San Diego? Um, and then there's the lifetime mentoring. Some of us will be mentored forever by our parents because they are genuinely invested in us. We have rapport. And for those of you who may not have parents that do that for you, we find uncles, we have cousins, we have people in our community who do that mentoring for us. So just know that there's someone that has been interested or has already probably started mentoring you throughout your life. I want you to just take a moment and think about those great relationships that you've had in mentoring. And what are some of the characteristics of an effective mentor that show up for you? What kind of support does a mentor provide? When I think about characteristics, I think about someone whose values aligned with mine, someone who's committed and dedicated, someone who has a little energy, because I have a little energy, maybe different for you. And then the support they provide ranges, ranges based on what I'm asking, right? And what I'm interested in. So know that there's no right or wrong answer to those questions, but I want you to know what are the things that you're looking for so that you know when you find a good fit in someone who might be able to answer your questions or help you achieve your goals? At UC San Diego, we already have a rich mentoring ecosystem. We have our faculty. Our faculty mentor our students on a regular basis in classes, through office, which I'm trying to change to student hours, through one-on-one -on -one connections, through lab time. There's a lot of opportunities to have that space. We also have advisors, academic advisors, um, advisors and other in courses, all types of advisors at UCSD. Some of you may work at a job or work here. We have supervisors, we have teaching assistants, which support our classes. We have graduate students for people who may get in a research lab or they may be the teaching assistants themselves. They may just be walking around campus and you see that they may have a little seasoning on them and they can answer a question for you. There's also mentor programs, coaching, as well as your friends have been mentors to you and can continue to be mentors to you. And so know that there's a rich system already in place. You can also go to mentoring.ucsd.edu. At mentoring.ucsd.edu, you'll find resources, a resource guide. You'll find resource videos that'll teach you about our campus. You'll also find a resource list that'll help you answer some questions for yourself while you're waiting for your mentor to come on board or for you and your mentor to explore together. So when you go there, you can click on a mentoring guide, program guide, and you can go and be proactive and look at the different names of programs. You can look at what year or type of student you are, what specific groups or majors or fields, and then the type of mentoring. And some of the mentoring at UCSD even comes with credit that you can get to add to your transcript. You can also go to Triton's Connect, which is UCSD's LinkedIn um, for our community. Our alumni are highly engaged in that space. Students are welcome to join. We even have some community members who are in there and they can say they're looking for a mentee and you can look for them and you can look and see who would fit based on who says they're available. 
There's also a program called Mentoring for All, which I started with, that you can click on. And we are going to start doing force matching of people who are aligned. And we ask questions like, how often do you want to meet? We ask, what, what you know, are you first gen? We ask you, are you a transfer student? Some of the pieces that get into the nuances of how to connect with you. When you go to Triton's Connect, this is the page and what it'll look like. And you can look for find a mentor or look for mentoring relationships because sometimes you may have already been paired into one. Other resources at UCSD that I want to brag about are Triton Tools and Tidbits, a podcast that has come to connect another way our students to campus resources. And there's some great stuff in there that may answer some of your basic questions. You didn't do so well on the exam, so how do you recover from academic disappointment? You're looking for a um, someone to write a letter of rec. What does that look like? You need to write a paper. There's a writing, you wanna to connect to a faculty member. There's one in there for that. So you have resources available to you also, separate from the mentors and the individuals who may sign up. In the end, we're so excited to ensure that our system at UCSD provides mentoring and stewardship of your success at our institution. So we want every student at UCSD who wants a mentor to have a mentor. And thank you for your time. It's been my pleasure. My name is Dr. Ebene Williams, and I hope you enjoy mentoring and uh, took some value out of this presentation.